Right. Hello and welcome to this edition of the Angels and Destiny show. Why is this show called this? You may ask, so I'll tell you. The accepts the meaning of angels messenger and the accepts the meaning of destiny is to make firm establish. So my guests and I bring you messages to establish what you need to know in the present. And also I like working with angels and the calmness they bring. Now in a moment, I will introduce you to my wonderful guest, Doug Buckingham. But before that, I would like to say thank you for watching this show live at a later date as it means a lot to me to connect with like-minded women. Now, if you've never met before, then my name is Ray, and I love to help women to crossroads in their life, heal their past, create their future, transform the present, so they can take control of their destiny in the here and now. I'm the founder of Radiant Angel Energy, and I use future life regression, past life regression, angelic reiki, hypnosis, meditation, angel cards, to help women who feel lost get clear on their destiny and their reason for being here. Now, each episode of the show will cover various themes of your journey, a mini guided meditation, range of card reading. With the wisdom of my wonderful guest, like today's guest, Doug Buckingham, we'll be talking about how unlocking past lives help the current one. Now, Doug Buckingham is a highly experienced hypnosis regression therapy trainer and has run regression therapy training programs in Scotland, England, South Africa, Italy, and Mexico, and has run past life workshops in about 20 different countries. He's been working with past lives for nearly 15 years and in that time has regressed several thousand people, trained hundreds of practitioners and run many workshops. He's a fountain of knowledge and intuitive wisdom about all matters, regression and past life and is a fabulous public speaker. He has a private practice in South Bucks, runs workshops and retreats in the UK and overseas and also works online all over the world with testimonials such as an excellent human being, teacher and therapist. Doug has helped me so much. You working towards understanding myself better and letting go of what no longer serves me through a series of regressions. And I highly recommend working with Doug Buckingham. He is insightful and leader in hypnosis and past life regression. He's also been an excellent teacher as I've attended a handful of his courses. Doug is a very generous person, makes you feel at home. I highly recommend paying Doug a visit for therapy or training. And of course, I can add my own testimonial to that because Doug trained me in hypnosis. So um, I can say he is a really great um, guy at uh, all things regression. So um, without further delay, hello, Doug, and welcome to the Angels and Destiny show. How are you today? Hello, and thank you very much for the welcome. I'm really good today, and I'm really... Um... I'm delighted to be here. Um, I suddenly realised that you're talking about helping women all around the world. So as a man, I feel especially honoured to be here, yeah, that you've uh, you've had me on here. I guess most of your guests are probably female. So um, I, 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 I have a mix, and I, I think men can actually bring um, a different dynamic to the show. And and that, and you have such, and some, you know, and sometimes men have such amazing wisdom that we kind of like go, oh, okay, yeah, maybe that is the room, something we need to uh, to look at. So before we get into this fascinating conversation, I want to remind you that you can ask questions, leave comments and thoughts as both Doug and I want to be part of this conversation. So please don't be shy. We'll try and say hello to everyone who says um, hello and answer any questions live or once the show is finished. And if you're watching this on my YouTube channel, then please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to it so you can get um, updates on all my recordings. So, Doug, why don't you tell us more about yourself and how unlocking past lives can help the current one? I most certainly will do. Uh, where do I start is the only question. So I, I'm probably going to start when I was about six or seven years old. And um, it was a rainy Sunday afternoon, and I'm making up the Sunday afternoon because I haven't got a clue what day of the week it was. <laughs> Uh, but it was a rainy afternoon in Essex where I was brought up and um, I distinctly remember watching an old Barbara Streisand film with my parents and in it she was a crazy lady who wanted to go and stop smoking and um, she found her way to a, I'm guessing it was a psychiatrist and in um, the psychiatrist's office there was a couch and um, as she lay down on the couch to do whatever the psychiatrist was going to do to help her stop smoking, what came out of the film was a series of what were past life experiences. And as a little kid of six or seven, for some reason, I found this perfectly acceptable. I found the concept of jumping on the couch and talking about your life 
and your past life's completely normal. So uh, I kind of came into this life with a knowing that these things were possible. I, I never really did anything about it. I never really worked with it, even thought that, you know, it could possibly be a career for many, many years. And I worked in corporate and, you know, worked too hard, uh, got involved with working in corporate, gave it up and uh, started to find myself, for want of a better expression, about 20 years ago. And along my journey of learning uh, many different things that I did to find out about myself, I did a, a two-year course in spiritual healing. I learned Reiki, uh, I became a Reiki master and a Reiki teacher, and I taught Reiki for many years. And I think I'm attuned to about five or six different types of Reiki, if I remember rightly. Um, I also had um, a, uh, a monkey on my back. And that monkey on my back that I really needed to work with, I mean, I had several things that I needed to work through as I developed myself, but that particular monkey was that I wanted to stop smoking. So to cut a long story short, I found myself um, just purely by chance as I was thinking about stopping smoking. And I've been trying to stop smoking for a while. I'd been two years on and off. And I, I found myself, uh, found my way to a hypnotherapist. And when I booked with a hypnotherapist, I literally stopped smoking like that. And um, that opened up a whole new realm for me of how the heck did hypnosis work? How did it stop me smoking when I'm quite a strong-willed person and couldn't stop by myself? So I ended up doing a couple of hypnosis courses. Um, I like to say I swapped one addiction for another. <laughs> uh, courses for quite some time, but it was a much healthier addiction second time around. And within the, the scope of my clinical hypnosis course, we tackled past life regression. Now, um, you know, um, what happened on the course was I was already having spontaneous past life experiences by that stage, which I had no context for, no explanation for, didn't understand at all. Um, and when our instructor on this very clinically minded um, regression course um, introduced um, past life regression for us. He said, um, well, some of you might want to know about this, but we don't really believe about believe in it. And we, we'd like you to uh, try and avoid doing past life regression if you possibly can and use something a bit more grounded and practical for them. And for me, actually, was having um, my own experiences by this stage and was supremely interested on it. This was like, ah, you know, what are you talking about? And um, anyway, during the practice session, because they were relatively graceful and did let us practice the technique at least. Um, I had my own experience, which related very much. I'd come back from a holiday in Tibet, uh, you know, maybe a few days earlier, and I'd come back with what I thought was food poisoning. And I was, you know, I had the remnants of food poisoning still going on in my gut. I only just made it to the course. And um, in the past life that I went into, I was a small boy in Tibet who was stabbed through the stomach. And when we went through the stomach and came, uh, went through the regression and came to the other side of it, all of the pain that I had in my stomach at that point completely evaporated. And so for me, that was a real convincer. Um, mm. and immediate benefits from that that were quite tangible because they were quite physical. Um, and so I actually went on to study past life regression in great detail. And um, what I discovered, I'd been getting, you know, I was reasonably trained in hypnosis by the time I found past life regression training. And um, I was getting, you know, reasonable results with hypnosis. And I have to say, I still get very good results with hypnosis. But what happened when I started working with people for regression was that very strange things started to happen. And when I say very strange, I'm going to define that by saying it's almost like some jaw-dropping results came out of the experience. I remember one of the first people that I worked with was going to hospital um, for um, every three months, she'd go to hospital for a check on her stomach because what would happen was she had an internal bleed in her stomach. And um, this was verified by the hospital. Anyway, we did the regression and strangely enough, it was another stabbing through the stomach. Um, and what we did was a little bit of work around removing what was an arrow um, in the past life, and when she went back to the hospital, they said, well, what's happened? What have you done? Because they couldn't find that internal bleed that had been there for 10 or 15 years that was medically verifiable. So things like that started to happen on a reasonably regular basis. And I, I got completely hooked on the subject of past life. So, you know, for the past, I think you said 15 years, and as mm. I 
wrote a bit of my bio for, um, I should know that it's right. So for the past 15 years or whatever it is, I've been working, I do a few things, but I've been working mainly with, um, I would say regression in general, but there's a focus on past life. So for me, it's, you know, it, it's something that I do for a living, if you like, although I think of it as more of a calling. Um, I train other people in it, but it's also a passion. I, I kind of think past lives, you know, it's, it's where my mind goes when, you know, even if I'm sort of sitting at, uh, you know, around a friends for dinner and there's people there that I don't know and they start sort of talking about their problems. I, you know, my mind is all automatically thought, oh, I wonder what's happened there. Yeah. I don't say that or push that upon them, but you know, that's kind of where my, my mind goes. You know, for my mind, everything that we're experiencing in our current reality doesn't matter what it is, we've most probably experienced it before. There is an origin of it. And hey, sometimes, yes, it's the current life, but quite often that can be uh, that can be a past life. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it, it, yeah it's, it's absolutely fascinating. I totally, totally agree, agree with you. You know, yeah, quite often I'll be in conversations with people and they'll go thinking, hmm, is there a past life thing going on here that maybe they ought to be looking at? But you, but you don't say it because obviously, um, you know, you, you wait wait for them um, to to do it. So, um, where you've been using past life um, for fifteen years, um, and you've you've seen physical, obviously physical results from it. Course, yeah. What what else you know? What else can past life regression help with, if not just physical things? I I would say the physical things are probably in the minority. To tell you the truth. Um, I think they probably came along in the early part of when I was practicing, um, because although I have a very open mind, I actually need to see results. And of course, physical things are actually where we can see a result yeah. quite quickly. Um, and it's almost as though I think my soul kind of wanted to give me that validation in terms of the people that I drew to me to work with. Um, but really, the main thing is emotional stuff. Um, I, I'm going to take the view um, that, you know, most of our problems in life are emotionally based. And I'll bring that into physical stuff as well to, um, to a great degree. Um, so a lot of the stuff that I come across or that people come to me for is around emotional stuff. And, of course, within that, you know, we're talking about relationships, you know, how relationships are perhaps not going well, why they aren't going well, an absence of relationships. And then it's with the relationship with ourselves, which is a huge topic. Self-esteem is one of the biggest things on the planet. And then it can be about our purpose and how we move forward in life. Um, the, the essence of what I work with people for is when they're a bit stuck. That's what I do. And I, you know, I'm like the bloke who comes along and unblocks the drain in your back garden when there's a... <laughs> <laughs> The past, what a beautiful metaphor I just gave. Um, <laughs> gets the point across. <laughs> gets the point across, yeah. Um, so, you know, it, it's about unblocking people. Relationships are the big thing. Emotional stuff. Um, there's all always a lot of um, interest around money. I've worked with so many people for money over the years and money issues. I actually developed a separate workshop on it, which I do every so often. Um and they're the biggies. And then, you know, life purpose is a big thing. You know, why mm. am I here? You know, what's my role in life? And, you know, a lot more people, are, I believe, um, you know, we're all, you know, we're all souls having a human experience. However, I think at this particular point in the evolution of our planet, there's a lot more people who are here as souls and ready to clear the clutter of some of their past lives. So a lot of people are kind of walking around the planet um, literally or metaphorically saying, well, what am I here to do? How can I move into something that I love? And of course, we have a, you know, we have a society which is very based on materialism and it's often quite um, difficult for those people to move from the material world into something that they love, which has a spiritual or energetic component. So, you know, a lot of people come along for reasons like that. Um, you know, problems with family, friends, you know, all sorts of things. But, you know, emotions are probably the undercurrent of what I do. Yeah, yeah. I mean, emotions are a big thing. And, and again, especially with emotions for yourself and actually accepting yourself and being who you are really meant, meant to be without all that, that stuff from the past. 
yeah and i agree you know i you know a lot of the clients i see is sort of where am i going what's my life purpose why am i here for and it's like we've all come into this current this current time to heal and get rid of all that past stuff so we can actually move forward and bring lots of lots of light um to us and Jem Roth um has their um see and this this is how i love synchronicity as i was thinking of past life regression session with doug i guess it's no coincidence i've stumbled across this live exactly it's the you the way the universe works yeah exactly yeah and jenna may says so interesting thanks for sharing your experiences and information there uh, thank you for watching uh, jenna and thank you for watching jan and uh, um Brian comments if you get any more anyone else has got any comments or Jan or Jenna, you want to add any more comments or ask any questions? You know, if you've got any questions um, that, that you might have about having a past life regression, you know, then this is a chance to actually ask them before you actually um, before you, before you actually um, book. So we can I, like to that, I love questions. Questions make a, a workshop a talk. Jan's done workshops with me before, so she knows I like questions. So yeah. if you got any, Jan? Go for it. Yeah, exactly. You've, you've got Doug to answer questions. You've got me to answer questions. You know, you, the, the world is your oyster to ask any questions um, that you want. Obviously, within reason, <laughs> because there are some questions that we really can't take on live because um, I get banned. Um, <laughs> I'll go, I'll go to Facebook prism, Facebook jail. And, uh, so um, unlocking past lives, helping the current one. Yes, I can see how it can help physically and emotionally. But if someone is kind of like, yeah, but I don't really know, why would a past life affect me now in the current? You know, how can you explain that to me? I'm going to tell, I, I like to explain things with a little bit of a story and then I'll explain my story a little bit. I remember I, in the early days of when I was practicing, I lived in Greenwich and um, I, actually it was when I was training and I was looking for my final case study um, and uh, a friend of mine who actually still lives in Greenwich, I bumped into her and I said, hi, and I won't name her, but um, I said, hi, I'm blah, blah, looking for a case study. And she's like, absolutely not. She said, absolutely not. I've got enough problems in the current life. Thank you very much. I don't need to look at past lives. And so, you know, I said, fair enough. Never try and persuade anybody. And, um, you know, of course, you kind of know what's coming. And um, a day later, I bumped into her again. And she looked at me and just went, I'm still not coming. I'm still not coming. And then the next day, and this is a true story, um, the next day I was walking from one side of Greenwich Park towards Blackheath, and she was walking from the other side of Greenwich Park from Blackheath towards Greenwich. And we kind of saw each other coming down the path. I guess. <laughs> uh, when we met in the middle, she went, okay, I, I get it, I'm coming. And, and as it was, she was actually working with an autoimmune disease at the time. Um, and, you know, her big line, and a big line I get from a lot of people is, how can these things help my current experience? How can these possibly abstract past lives help my current experience? And, you know, really, I take the view that the soul incarnates time and time and time again. Now, what happens, and if we take an arbitrary number like 100, let's say we've all had 100 past lives, and you know, some people will be more, some people will be less, it doesn't really matter what the number is, probably about 20% of those are unfinished. We've actually got the soul's unfinished business, and that'll be emotional stuff, it might be thoughts, it might be physical stuff, and what will happen is we will carry that into a future incarnation. And so the, the soul will make a choice to bring it into a particular incarnation to work with it in order to release it. So when I talk about there's many people on this planet who will probably be working through their clutter, clearing out their wardrobes in this current life, that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the soul's unfinished business. And it's a little bit like in the current life where if you've had a, a relationship issue with a particular friend or lover or partner or whatever it was and it's and it's finished quite badly you sometimes you stand a very good chance of exa attracting exactly the same type of person next time around because you you haven't finished 
working with that particular energy. And that's kind of how past lives work. They they keep on repeating in our consciousness, and particularly in our subconscious, and thus creating our reality until we actually take a look at them and, and resolve them. Um, you know, it's, it's really my definition of karma is that we've got, it's not an eye for an eye, tooth through a tooth type justice, as some people would have you believe, but it's a predisposition to a certain type of energy that your soul has chosen to work for, uh, work with. So if you've kind of been robbed in past lives, then, um, or you've been a robber in past lives, you're probably going to have a predisposition to work with the energy of robbing. You might be a thief. You might be a person who runs a bank and gets your bank robbed. It doesn't matter. But that energy is kind of going to be what you're drawn to until you actually kind of get it and work through it. And, you know, how these things work is that what we do is we – and it doesn't always matter where the source is, but we go back to the source of the problem using regression, using hypnosis sometimes, Um and, you know, whether that's in a current life, whether that's in a past life, doesn't really matter. But usually by working with the source of the particular memory and re-experiencing that and then releasing the emotional hold, the energetic hold, so that we complete the story, that's normally when the past life will resolve itself and when the current life issue will either resolve itself or become a dancer easier yeah so would you say because you mentioned regression and hypnosis um sort of like in the in the same sort of like thing so would you say past life regression is hypnosis or it's different to hypnosis well really regression is an aspect of hypnosis you could call um uh, hypnosis the umbrella term regression is part of hypnosis um and past life regression is part of many uh, hypnosis courses around the planet. Um, I kind of do that because I don't always use regression. We have tricks. Uh, I don't always use hypnosis to regress people. We have little tricks of the trade where we can actually regress people quite quickly um, using simple little techniques where we get them back to the source. Sometimes, you know, people wander into my uh, my house and the, the emotional energy is quite evident. And by using that emotional energy, we can get them to go into a past life or, or current life situation quite quickly to to find out what that source is. So sometimes I use hypnosis in, conventional, in the conventional sense, but a lot of the time I don't. You don't always need to once you know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you you were saying earlier that um, hypnosis is kind of like it's more it's more past life regression stuff now than people coming to you for hypnosis. I have a, because I'm quite sort of um, without sounding as though I'm blowing a trumpet. Um, you know, I'm relatively well known around because I train other people in part in regression therapy, so I'm relatively well known. I get quite a lot of people who come to me. Uh, for regression, that's like my speciality, if you like. But you know, I also get a lot of a lot of people who come for hypnosis as well. But you know, if I had to look at, um, you know, for example, I've just finished my accounts for uh, the last tax year, and I'm going to say that probably sixty to seventy percent of the the one to one clients that I saw were regression, uh, because it's the main thing that I teach. Well, hypnosis and regression, I teach. You know, that's. Um, you know, the universe sends me clients so I can learn more. Yeah, yeah, which is, their own. and then it is always a learning curve for you as well um, when you're doing it because no two people coming for aggression have got the same issues or they're going to have the same experience um, when, when, when they do it. Yeah, one of my little learnings, I hope none of my, I'm starting a course in March. I hope none of my students are listening quite yet. But one of my little learnings that I'll tell them all is always expect the unexpected. And, uh, you know, some people's faces kind of drop when you tell them that. But, you know, it is a really good, um, it is a really good uh, little saying to have in mind. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. No, too. <laughs> exactly the same. And you go, oh, my God, where am I going to go with this one? And then you have to uh, have to rely on their own. Um, on, on your own intuition and and guidance that, that you're given. And I quite like the way you work as well, because um, like when I did my hypnotherapy with you, it's very holistic. It's not the 
very clinical um, side of things. You're, you're, you know, you're quite spiritual with um, the way you do your past life regression, hypnosis, etc., um, which I think is quite a nice twist on it compared to the clinical side um, of yeah. people. I mean, if, if I had to kind of, um, if I kind of had to put it in a box, I, I, I believe that everything is, uh, hi, Badini. Um, I believe that everything is energy, whether it's emotions, whether it's thoughts, whether it's uh, physical stuff. And, you know, for me, that's quantum physics. Now, at this point, I'm not even going to pretend that I understand quantum physics properly, but I know that's a principle of quantum physics. So, um you know, everything is energy, and that's kind of where I come from. So even on the hypnosis courses, I talk about energy management, which I don't think many other people around do. But for me, it's an essential component of, of doing hypnosis. And, you know, it's a big, big component of um, doing regression. So, yeah, I'm, uh, you know, whether you call it energetic, whether you call it spiritual, I don't really mind. I, I, I tend not to sort of get too precise about that. Mm. But, you know, I'm open to possibilities there. I, you know, the more I learn, the more I realize there's so much out there that we don't fully understand, the less I'm inclined to um, label myself or anybody else under that. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, which makes absolute sense. And when we do as humans tend to label ourselves and other people and, and everything um, as part of the thing that we, we kind of like try to, to, um, to understand about it. So, you obviously work one to one with past life regression. Sure. Um, do you ever do talks or workshops for, with people and take groups of people into past lives at all? Not often enough. However, I um, it's one of my New Year's resolutions to get a little bit more organised. So I run training courses, um, which are it's quite a big uh, commitment for people, but they are quite amazing. Um, next one starts in March and it's fully booked already, which is great. Um, and I also um, run one and two day workshops. I've got a one day workshop coming up in London on the, I'm going to say the 16th of February. I hope that's Sunday, the 16th of February, which we're doing in St. John's Wood, Violet Hill Studios. Um, and that's very much an exploratory workshop. So if anybody's kind of listening or watching at a later date, that's a great little intro to past life work. Um, I do talks, you know, I'm here tonight doing a bit of a talk on it. I did one for um, a local parapsychology group just before Christmas. I do random talks. I, I, I tend to wait until I get invited. So I'm actually, my New Year's resolution is to kind of get out there and look for the talks um and uh, find a few places to talk a few bit more um hi Rhonda. i do this life regression as well i um yeah i um you know my my mode of operation is that i believe everything has, has a source and we don't entirely know where it is until we start working with it whether it's this life whether it's past lives doesn't really matter it's always started somewhere so yes is the answer to that yeah and and sometimes i mean i don't know if you, if you find this sometimes Doug, but people will come to you for a past life there um so they want to go back hundreds or thousands of years or whatever but they find that when you regress them to the source it actually is in this lifetime i had um i had a oh it must be 10 years ago i guess i had um three cousins who were all hindu and uh, they all had a great belief in past lives and uh, they all wanted a book a past life, book a past life, book a past life. And all three came, and I won't go into details of what the issue was. However, they, none of them could get past the current life because there was something serious that needed looking at in the current life. Um, and, uh, yeah, that was a little bit of irony, I would say, from the universe. Yeah, yeah, we, we like the way the irony from the universe. And Mondo says, uh, thank you. And Jen says, I was born in Blackheath, regression. I have been upsetting a long-standing family situation that I feel must be karmic and hope that regression might help this also back pain. Um, yes and yes. I mean, I'd like to talk to you in more detail at some point about that, Jan. Um, but, yeah, often family situations are karmic in nature and why? Because we often, throughout our lives, we incarnate with the same group of souls. So unresolved stuff from past lives is 
of course, it's not only with ourselves, but it's with those nearest and dearest in, in our past lives. So, you know, it's not always the case, but often we reincarnated and we know people from before. And, um, you know, so family stuff, yeah. Um, I also take the view that we, we choose our parents. We choose mm. to be born into certain families. And sometimes people look at me and think, I've just descended from another planet when I say that. But I am pretty firmly um, committed to that. Um, yeah, I totally it's, all, it's all about choices. Um, as personalities, um, you know, sometimes we may sort of argue that, but uh, the soul chooses, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I totally agree. I know exactly why I chose my parents, you know, um, for, for, for this lifetime. And I think that's the thing also sometimes when you understand why you chose to be born at this particular time to um, your parents, um, that can also help you and give you insights into um, why you're here and what your purpose um, in this lifetime is. Yeah, absolutely. It's all, it's all part of the bigger picture that is us. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, totally. So now, as you know, I do um, guide meditations, angel card reading. So each week I like to ask my guests whether they would like an angel card reading or a guide meditation. So Doug, what would you like me to well, do? Well, I'm going to go for the angel card reading because I, I do guided meditations myself. So something new and completely different would be just the ticket, eh? Okay. Well, I'll tell you what we do, okay, since I've got you on. I'm going to throw you right on the spot here. Oh, good. I like that. I'm going to pull an angel card and then how about you do us a short mini guided meditation? Righto. Okay, we'll see what the cards come up with for that one. Now as those that um, know me, um, when I do the cards, I don't actually predict the future. Um, I do the cards for the present time. So although I work with, or, um, past lives that's to heal your past so you can work in the present and i work with future lifetimes but that's so you know where you're going so it doesn't affect you in the present so everything i do is for the present so when i do the card readings it is what does doug and everyone watching need to know for their highest good in this moment in time what does doug and everyone who's watching this live with later date need to know for their highest good this moment in time and i think no one wants to come out for us which comes in absolutely perfect with what you were saying with regards to um, your New Year's resolution. First light, beginning a new circle. Beginning a new cycle, brilliant. Oh, well, yep. I, yeah. So there's a feather, there's a sun, there's a, looks like a bit of a Christmas tree there. There's nice. In there as well. Yeah. yeah, it's like everything, a bird's nest and everything. So. You know, it is it is saying that for what you, Doug, and for all of us watching need to know, it's a new cycle is beginning, you know. It's, you know, 2020, this great new year, et cetera. And we just literally had validation from the from a random card from the angels. So they're just really confirming this and that, yes, you do need to go and start finding people that are doing the talks and go and say, yes, I'll come and do a talk. <laughs> go, and, go and introduce yourself, jump in there. Yep, absolutely. Hi, Debbie, who's just said hi there. Yep, she has indeed. So, um, oh, hi, Debbie. Um, so, uh, Doug, why don't you, oh, if you're happy to, do us a very short mini guided meditation, maybe something about a new cycle. Okay. Um, how long do you want me to make it? Um, five, ten minutes. All right. Okay. Good. I, I need I need boundaries for that kind of thing. You know. Yeah, I, I always need boundaries for that as well. It's like otherwise, I just we we just go on a journey to God knows where forever. All right. So if everybody who's listening live would like to get themselves comfortable and uh, be in a position where uh, they're going to be undisturbed for the next, let's say, seven or eight minutes. And anybody who's listening on the recording, you'll be able to do that a bit more easily because you'll be able to pause the recording, I'm guessing, and just make sure that you can, um, you know, chuck the dog out of the room and, uh, you know, okay. put, a sign, put, put a sign on the door to stop the kids coming in, whatever it might be, yeah? So um, get yourself comfortable. Get yourself in a position where you can just be undisturbed for seven or eight minutes. Then close your eyes. 
close your eyes and just take a nice deep breath in just to begin when you breathe out just a nice big almost like a sigh so you can feel your your shoulders dropping and your body just relaxing and just as you do that just give your body permission to relax and to be completely comfortable and there really is nothing for you to do other than to listen to my words and allow my words to help you and my energy to help you in whatever way is for your highest good at this moment in time and what i'd like you to do is to start using your imagination and to imagine that you're in a beautiful place and wherever that beautiful place is is fine it can be a place in nature it might be your back garden it might be somewhere in your house or it might be somewhere you've been on holiday just imagine yourself in a beautiful place somewhere that you think of as being beautiful and as you imagine yourself in that beautiful place and that place might be somewhere you'd like to go as well of course as you imagine yourself in that beautiful place you might see yourself feel yourself or just have a knowing of yourself in that place however your imagination works for you is fine and just be aware that as you imagine yourself in this beautiful place you're completely safe comfortable and protected now this beautiful place is something that you can always access this place is part of your inner world although it might be a real place it's just a part of your inner landscape and you give yourself the time give yourself the space to access this space now what i'd like you to do is to become more and more aware of the power of your imagination the power of your subconscious mind to work hand in hand with your imagination so start creating a reality for you which is more and more attractive and as you imagine yourself in this beautiful place what i'd like you to do is to find a particularly comfortable spot where you can lie down and relax as you lie down and relax you can just drift off almost as though you're having a pleasant day here. and in your mind's eye you can imagine just floating above that body lying down being comfortable in that beautiful place and you can just get a, a picture of yourself a picture of yourself as you'd like to be a picture of yourself as you'd like to be in perhaps three months time and perhaps you're a little bit more abundant perhaps you're a little bit healthy perhaps you're a little bit fitter but as you imagine yourself lying in that beautiful place you can just imagine those changes taking place to your imaginary self whatever those changes are perhaps you're free of back pain perhaps you're free of some emotional pain just using the power of your imagination you just make a small subtle alteration in the you that's lying in this beautiful place It really doesn't matter what these small, subtle changes are. As you just engage with your imagination and the ability that you have to bring small, subtle, significant changes in your subconscious. What starts to happen is that you start to create a new cycle, a new pathway in your brain, a new pathway.
being fully grounded, energized, and ready for the rest of your evening. Or afternoon, depending where you are in the world. Exactly. <coughs> God, so, so hard trying not to cough during that. <laughs> I think I'm getting well, that cold. I think I'm getting that cold. Um, have lost connection to Doug. Well, hopefully we, we might have lost him um, video wise. Um, well, you did. I I did. Um, um, but he is definitely definitely back, and hopefully you continue to hear him. I, I still heard him, so hopefully you are still able to um, hear him hear him as well. And that um, it's just the way it goes. Sometimes we lose people; they come back. We lose them; they come back. I did actually spot that the camera connection dropped at this end, but I was on it pretty quickly. So hopefully the sound didn't go for more than about five seconds. Mm -hmm. Um, no, I, as far as I'm aware, there was no um, uh, a sound loss for, for me. And what I hear, hopefully, is what everyone else um, hears. So um, let's have a look. All back on, Angela. Hi, Angela. Yes. yes, hello, Angela. Thank you very much for letting us know that. Um, hopefully, uh, there wasn't too, too much. And if we did, just watch the replay and scroll along to the, uh, to the thing. So, so thank you for um, doing that for, for us, Doug. Sorry I threw that one in for you, but, you know, that's the way it goes. I love a bit of spontaneity, hey? <laughs> exactly. So, Doug, do you have any insights or thoughts to leave our viewers? Yes. Um, gosh, where do you want me to start? Um, <laughs> what have I got? Um, really, I, I do believe that as we are... Um, you know, every year is a special year. Every moment of our lives is a special moment of our lives. But, you know, what I'd encourage you all to do is to, you know, um, do something similar to what I just gave you there. Take a little bit of time for you each day in your inner world. It will make a difference. You are, it's a scientific process. I threw a little bit of the science of uh, developing new neural pathways in there. Um, but your imagination creates your reality. So um, your subconscious creates your reality. And so take a little bit of time for you each day, even if it's only three minutes, but a little bit of private time for you. And what you're doing there is you're, you're taking more responsibility for your life. You're working towards creating your reality a little bit more. You're probably calming down and de-stressing your life. So that's my big thing. Um, I think that past lives and um, regression are the most powerful thing on the planet in terms of therapy. And that's what I say to you. If you're feeling brave, if you're feeling bold, go and investigate past lives in some way. If you're feeling, well, you know, I'd perhaps like to uh, go at a slightly slower pace than that past life stuff, then start off by taking a little bit of time for you. Um, I'm always available to chat about these things. I, I offer a free 15-minute consultation on my website. I notice that somebody's on the call who's already booked one in already, which is great. Um, so, you know, um, it's all about you. You might think your life is about other people, but actually it's probably not. Um, whoever you are, wherever you are, take a bit of time for you because – um, yes, there is part of life that's being about service. Yes, we're all here to be of service in some way as a soul and as a, uh, a personality. However, it's also to look in the mirror and to see what it is that you're here to work with for you. Was that Excellent. enough or would you like me to carry on? No, no, I think that, um, that, uh, that, that, that covers uh, um, uh, pre pretty much um, about it. So everyone, I hope you enjoyed this and found it insightful and that the words of wisdom Doug gave you will help you further on your journey. And I hope you didn't miss too much of the um, meditation. And hopefully if you watch it back, um, you might you might see all of it. So Doug, if people want to connect with you, how do they do that? Well, there's about 37 different ways as far as I can work out in the modern age. However, I would say let's go back to old fashioned and give me a call. My number is on my website at 07979 750291 or my email is doug at dougbuckingham.com. 
www.thepodcastmaker.com. So really easy to remember. But you'll find me on Facebook. You'll find me on LinkedIn. You'll find me on this and that and the other. And dip, 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 <laughs> all those. But, um, you know, I'm easily findable. I have a relatively less common name. So if you put Doug Buckingham into Google, I come up pretty quickly. Yeah, if you try, trust me, you will find him really, really easily. And what I do is I'll put a, um, a couple of um, links in. And Doug, if you get a chance, if you want to put in the link for um, that event you're doing in February as well. Oh, gosh, you want me to put it in the box now? You don't have to put it in the box now. You can come back and put it in the box later. Okay, all right, good, because that would have been challenging. <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't do a second one to you. No, you can you can do it um, later. That that's That's fine. So thank you everyone so much for watching and I'd like to invite you to share this video as I'm sure there are more women who feel lost and want to get clear on their destiny just like you. And if you have reached crossroads in your life and need help finding your destiny and getting clear on your path, then I would love to be that guide for you. Please reach out and connect with me and we can arrange a free 20 to 30 minute video call where we can chat about where you are, where you want to go and how I can help you. And I look forward to you all joining me next uh, Monday at 8 p.m. where my guest will be Lana Clara. So I look forward um, to speaking to her. So again, thank you so much, Doug, for being on the show. Thank for you for inviting me and thank you all for your comments and for those of you who turned up and those of you who didn't comment but were still listening and everything else. Thank you. Exactly. And Jan says, bye and lovely to join you both this evening. Light and love to all. Same same to you, Jan. Thank you so much. Again, thank you, Doug. And hopefully I'll, be, I'll speak to you soon. So everyone, have a wonderful rest of the evening, afternoon, morning, whatever time it is, wherever you're watching. And I'll see you again next week. Bye. Ta-ta.